Hey folks, today we're going to work on this Tiger One by RFM that you guys voted for with a full interior kit and some beautiful Zimmerit parts. Let's have at it. So opening this box, you can see I have a couple extra goodies like this photo etch upgrade set that RFM offers for this kit, which is just a nice simplistic set which I'm looking forward to and also I did get this metal barrel because it doesn't come with one so um, I thought mm, this is gonna be a really nice build but then I turned to step one <laughs> and saw photo etch <laughs> really so it's okay the first thing I actually wanted to do was cut out all the parts to make sure that this thing is square because I wanted to avoid the issue I ran into back on my panther build that you guys saw a couple weeks ago specifically what I'm looking for is any kind of gaps or raised pieces like you see here that could cause an, an issue later down the line like you can see here when I put this top plate on you can actually see a little bit of a gap so we want to eliminate that which I did um, and I'll show you later you can see that that's gone so the other thing I want to do is I want to make these ejector pin marks go away one of my biggest pet peeves that I see of other modelers is when they leave injector pin marks on the uh, interior kits and this is something that we need to address specifically when we build interiors because you're going to be able to see them and you don't want to break that so what I did was I took a curved um, blade and cut it down just to make it level with the bottom of the uh, hull and then I took a fiberglass pin and actually scraped that down you can see that results are really nice on the end so then I was able to work on the photo etch again you can see how beautiful this is with no ejector pin marks it looks like a bottom hull so I also want to take a moment just to appreciate the molded Zimmerit that they put on this kit. It was actually really nice. So the other thing is I want to make the tracks workable and you can see there's a little pin on these uh, suspension arms. So we cut that pin off and then attach the torsion bars. And what I really like about this kit is they're workable torsion. So I took a straight edge just to line them all up and then I glued them down to where they actually mount on the inside. So these are actually not only workable torsion bars, but they work like the real ones do, which I appreciate that. I appreciate the realism. So moving on to the interior, we're adding a few detail parts. And what I really liked about these instructions was that it actually showed you where they attach using the red marks here. I really appreciate that as a modeler, especially with all these intricate details. So I made my own homemade sticking apparatus. Let's call it using some blue tack and a toothpick to put that photo etch on. Here we're just going to go through some of the details in the kit, so the radio is pretty nice looking. I did run into an issue with the transmission, so this piece was actually warped out of the box. I don't know what happened. It looks like it probably broke when it got pulled out of the mold. So I did fix it up with some super glue, and luckily it's not in a place that we can see, so you'll see that in a moment. This did not hurt it at all, so one major defect I would call it so far in the kit. but. Uh, again, uh, I, I actually really love this kit, so spoiler alert, this kit went together really well. So again, uh, here we go with the completed transmission piece, um, at least the center piece of it. So one of the things you'll notice on these kits is that the handles are always molded like a bar, so you're going to have to like drill out or cut at the handles to make them actually look like handles or grab levers, things like that. And the other thing you want to make sure you do is test fit, because I did have an issue with the of one suspension arm there so you're going to want to test fit things as you go some other little details i added like on this radio i just used a small drill uh, or hand drill and drill out holes on the radio and also this is another part for the radio i think this is like a power distribution um, so <clears throat> using some lead wire i did attach at all the points that i had drilled out uh, just to add some some wires make it make it look like it's actually a wired up radio not just a box sitting there some other details that we're missing is actually some linkages for the shifter, so I added those in as well. Again, just trying to add in parts that are missing so it makes it look like it's actually a functioning tank, at least somewhat. The other thing I didn't have was a, a crew kit like I did on the Panther, so I had to scratch build my own headphones to tie into the radio, and again, I thought these turned out really nice. I just used some uh, brass and a punch and die tool to make the ears. And then again, lead wire to make everything else, scrap styrene to tie it all together. And it, I think it turned out really nice. You can see here as it's all tied into that radio. 
So the next step I wanted to do was actually apply some texture to the interior because one of the things that can be tough is if you have an interior with nothing on the walls, it can just look kind of boring. And it's made the same steel that would be on the outside, so why wouldn't the same texture be on the inside of the tank? It's the same metal, just the opposite side. So I thought I'm gonna put some steel texture, uh, rolled steel texture on the inside of the tank. So using the same way we've done on all our previous models, just using some thin down Tamiya um, putty, putting that down, uh, modeling it into place, uh, looks really nice. And then the next step was I wanted to add these grease fittings, the grease lines. Uh, so using again, just CA glue and some lead wire, you can see, I didn't put in as much as what there actually was. It's enough to give you the illusion that there's some lines in there. The other thing I noticed was there weren't holes cut out in the firewall to the engine, which on the real Tiger, these were holes, not like indented panels, so I cut them out as well using a drill. Again with the, with the handles, like all these grab handles are molded on like they're a solid part of the wall, and that just has to do with the molding process. So I just took, in this case, my uh, knife and just cut them away to make them look like a solid handle, and it worked pretty nice, it was really simple. So moving on to the engine compartment, we did have to put the engine together, and I will say this engine is like the standard for putting an engine together, in my opinion. The RFM is setting the standard. The details on this engine are just immaculate. I didn't have to add anything. They had every wire, every connection, every fitting I, I could see covered. So at this point, I'm ready to do some painting. You see a lot of the parts are left off just because we're going to have to do the bottom of the hole and then kind of tie everything together. So the first thing, as always, you've seen me do, is we got to coat our metal parts with Mr. Metal Primer. What this is going to do is allow the paint to adhere to all those metal parts. If you don't, it will probably beat up and it won't adhere well or just flake off. Look at these beautiful textures. You're always going to see me do this. I love looking at my textures after I primer, just because you can really see them pop with that black primer or whatever primer color you choose to use. In this case, I use black because of, we're on the inside of a tank. We want to capture those shadows. Here you can see all the beautiful details on this engine. I'm telling you, I did the TACOM engine. I had to add so many parts to it to make it look more realistic. This, I did not have to add a thing. It was beautiful out the gate. This transmission turned out really nice you can see the linkages we added look like they're part of the kit same thing with all the headsets and wires it just turned out so beautiful so happy with the results and you here we see the much more realistic results on the firewall as well so to paint the interior tiger interiors were this gray blue color so I'm gonna use a gray blue from ammo to paint the bottom of the interior and I'm so glad I got to use this color I will say again coming from my Panther G where it was all red oxide primer on the inside uh, um, it's kind of boring in my opinion after looking at this tiger um, and this gray blue color is so nice so just painting over everything that's going to be gray blue as a base coat and look at this radio I mean again it's just I couldn't get over all the details how, how beautiful this build just was as we kept going on the paint just adds so much now the firewall we're only going to paint the bottom okay because there is some prima vice that goes in here as well so in no particular order, we're going to move on to gray, and I know this is for the exhaust fans, or not exhaust fans, the radiator fans, i sorry. Um, and then also Schwartz Grau is going to be used for the engine and some other linkages and stuff in there. So you'll see me use this color on the uh, radiator hoses later. So it's just a nice gray color, and again, it really brings this engine to life. Looks great, matches what I've seen on, in reference photos. This olive green I used uh, in a couple places, like these ammo uh, crates or ammo boxes that are stored up for the ball gunner's position. We also have some smaller ammo bags as well. Um, here we're going to look at Prima Vice. So you can see I have it masked off the gray blue areas. So the gray blue is in the engine deck and underneath where the running gear is, the suspension. Um, the cream of ice is in the engine or the fighting compartment in the driving compartment just on the sponsons and up the sidewall so um, really easy to mask and with nothing in the tank it makes it much easier to mask because we have a nice square box to mask off and again we can see the beautiful details that texture still showing through so at this point again no particular order I'm using brass to paint 
the ammo. And you can see I actually painted the ammunition right on the screw. This is a really nice trick, really easy way to do it because these things are really small, fiddly, and it would take forever to not paint them on the screw. So I painted them on the screw. First you saw the AP shells. These are the HE shells. Using reference photos, I painted them yellow with the silver tip. The APs, I put the white ballistic cap, uh, white cap on the end. So trying to again get some realism. The, the uh, Instructions didn't explain that, so I just had to do some reference photos to, to get the accuracy there. So, moving on to the leather bits, I used Dark Tracks as the base for the leather seats, and then I used some other rust tones to basically add in some wear, if you will. So, it's kind of like chipping leather, but wear, weathering leather. Uh, red brown shadow, you can use any kind of different red brown or rust tones to do this. And basically from the outside we're just wearing it if you will as if the, the you know from the driver or in this case the radio operator getting in and out of the seat and just wearing the edges down things like that or I guess it would be the wearing the middle down I don't know either way this looked really realistic just doing it from the edges like that um, really liked how this turned out and you'll see this later as well as I did this on all the seats so I wanted to show you guys this gyroscope too that the driver used at least i'm pretty sure it's a gyroscope correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but that's what it looks like um used black at the top yellow on the bottom and i actually did come back and put little lines and you'll see them in a moment so i used crystal glass to simulate that it's behind glass there you can see the black lines i used so the pictures i saw this thing it had like a, a meter a range on it or you know it was some kind of device Anyway, going back to the radiator fans, I did paint them with like polished metal on the fan blades just because I don't think paint would have stuck to them very well. Also painted red on the fuel caps on the uh, gas tanks. Went back with red over all the grease fittings as well. I do believe they're called Zerk fittings, grease fittings, because they were red. And then black over top of, well, lots of different things. So at this point I was pretty much just painting black on a lot of different things that just needed black. Also tied in the fire extinguisher. I've always seen fire extinguishers red in um, instructions and whatnot, but I actually think they were more of a yellow color, but they might have been red or yellow, I don't, I don't know. Again, leave me know in the comments. I chose to go with the Dunkel Gelb with them just because I thought that was a little bit more realistic. But I came back over the pedals with some um, brown for German Oh gosh, that color. And it, it looks really good. I came back over with silver to make it look like it's worn. If you've ever seen diamond plating, you'd know that that's pretty much what it looks like, chipped in different colors. Came back over with this blue Panzer wash and then went on with some earth tones and did some modeling with a Q-tip in the bottom of the hull to make it look like it's kind of filled up crusty dirt and whatnot. Did that throughout the bottom of the hull. Again, we're trying to add just a lot of lived in feel. So at this point I'm going to switch over to chipping. So as we know these German tanks were primed with red oxide primer and rub brown is a great representation of that color. So we're chipping the paint on the interior of the tank to match. So we'll start with that rub brown and then we'll go to the steel chipping. Now I did this steel chipping the slow way with a brush and it came out okay. You'll see as I move along, just to save myself time, I actually switched to using sponge chipping for both the rut brown and for the steel chips, and you can't even tell the difference. And actually, it looked out, it looked really good, and it went so much faster. So, you know, if you're looking to just get that look down and don't want to be super precise, you can just use the sponge method for both. At this point, I went through with dark earth pigment and then came back with engine grime. And I, really, what we're trying to do is add earthy tones and textures specifically in the engine we're adding the engine grime because it just looks like the inside of your car after you've had it for a couple of years don't believe me open up your hood and look that color is everywhere on everything so i also wanted to add in some streaking just to again i love the texture on the sidewalls i want to add more visual details so we're going to do some streaking on the sidewalls just to make it so it's not boring we are going to add stuff in there later, so some of this is going to get covered up, but that's okay. We know it's there, we know it looks good, and we're happy with it. I also want to add a little bit of the oily gunk look 
in the bottom of the engine deck. Again, we might not be able to see this later, but you guys are seeing it now, and that's what matters to me. And I also know it's there. It looks like there's a little bit of oil down there. I like that. So this bottle here says interiors wash, or at least it did at one point. So you can see what I did was I used like engine grime and uh, wash for blue Panzer, blue wash for Panzer great, yeah, on the, on the gray blue parts. And then I used interiors wash on the white parts just because uh, you have different colors, so you want to use a different color wash, right? Different base color means different color wash. In this case, you can see I'm just using enamel thinners to make more streaking, but if I would have used blue, it would have actually shown up as blue on white, so you don't want to do that. Here we're putting on some of the little storage boxes, ammunition boxes that are at the radio operator's position. And again, these were all just olive green or black. Here we can see I'm actually starting to assemble things. So you can see I painted a lot of things off, obviously because we need to have access to the bottom of the hull. Painting everything and weathering it beforehand makes it so much easier to just glue it into place. And I wasn't using super glue, by the way. I used liquid cement for all this to attach it. And it works just as well through all the paint, no issues. So you can see that white box there, the storage box at the driver's seat, I chipped with sponge method for both red and steel chipping. You really can't even tell the difference. At least I couldn't, which is why I was happy with the results. And I decided for the sake of time to do that throughout the rest of the build. Again, coming back to the radio, you can see I added in, tried to add in some stripes for like the frequency that they were on, which was pretty cool. Painted the bits and bobs, the knobs black, and then came back with medium rust for the wires because I noticed they were kind of like a brownish, orangish color, so I wanted them to stand out. They did include a decal for the yeah, these gauges and whatnot, whatever they are. I did come back over with some softener and put them into place. I just didn't record it. Back to chipping. Just showing that specifically you have to use retarder when you're doing chipping. If not, it'll dry up really fast and you won't like the results. You gotta mix in some kind of retarder, acrylic paint retarder in this case. And then here's my German camo black brown, again from Vallejo that I use for the steel chipping. Um, any chipping color is fine. I just found that this one here is just kind of my go-to. I even have ammo's chipping color, but I still prefer this one just because it's a little bit out of grayer. It just looks more realistic to all the steel chips I've seen in real life. So, Coming back over with that blue for Panzer Grey wash, just going over all the nooks and crannies. Essentially what I'm trying to show you guys is what I'm doing to this transmission is what I did to pretty much everything throughout the interior of this tank. You've seen all the products I'm using. Blue for Panzer Grey, enamel thinner to make the streaks and whatnot. Rough brown for the paint chips. I used the steel color for the steel chips. And I'm coming back over here with engine grime for the bottom just to again add some more grimy goopness to the bottom of the transmission. This is the same process I pretty much used throughout every piece of this tank, with some exceptions in the engine compartment, obviously. You can see I also came, did the engine grime bit to the area underneath the transmission. Again, we might not see all of it, but certain angles, you're like, oh look, there's actually like engine gunk underneath that transmission. So again, just trying to add more realism and we know it's there. So at this point you see the driving compartment is coming together very nicely. I mean, it, it, lo it looks really good. And again, we made it feel lived in. So we're going to cordon off that section with its supports. And then we'll be moving on to the uh, fighting compartment here in a moment. I did come back and add a few of the ammo crates as well there, ammo bags. So here's our transfer case, at least I call it a transfer case unless it's called something else. That piece is how it actually transfers the power from the engine up to, to the turret basket to move it. Put in some ammunition that we had painted earlier on the sprues and you can see I just cut them off the sprues and put the part that I cut facing down so you don't actually see where I cut it. I didn't have to repaint them, I just hit the part I cut. I tested all the other pieces that come on these ammo racks and attach them to the sides. Now with these center panels that go around the turret basket, I wanted to try a little trick to make these panels actually stand out. So I took like some white, mixed it in with the blue gray, and just painted those panels. And then I did the normal weathering techniques. And you tell me in the comments if you feel like it actually did something. That I feel like I could actually see the edges of the panels a little bit better. 
Moving on to the motor, I did paint uh, those parts on the front there silver. I've always seen them silver. I don't exactly know what they are. I'm no expert on the Maybach engine. I just know those parts are always painted silver. Came back with some dry brushing and you, I just wanted to show you guys quickly how to make sure you get the paint off of your brush using just a, a paper towel. And then you get this nice effect all over this engine with, with the silver weathered look. It just looks really nice. This is just how I do the, the bright metallics uh, with my dry brush from Ammo. You definitely want some brush that's really thick. You don't necessarily need to have a brush I'm using, just a thick brush will work. Something that's soft as well. I wanted to add some rust tones to the exhaust as well. So I started with some acrylics this time just to change it up a little bit from my normal. But you'll see that I come back with pigments and go over it with pigments to give it a little bit of texture. A little bit of variety in, in the colors and whatnot, even though they're all rust colors, it's just, it's, it's pleasing to the eye to see multiple colors. And in this case, I actually used engine grime enamel to set it, because the enamel washes are no different. They're enamel thinner with pigments, so I used engine grime over top of this rust to set the pigments, only because I didn't want to make it brighter with like a light rust wash. I wanted to just add in the engine grime because it's... The same color I use throughout the rest of the engine, as you'll see in a moment. So I started with track rust, went to medium rust, set it all independently with engine grime. Now what I did here was I mixed a little bit of engine grime with some enamel thinner so it would flow better over all these details. I didn't want it to stick as much, I didn't want it to stick and I didn't want tide marks, I just wanted kind of a greasy, grimy look. So I started with that engine grime, put some fresh engine oil on areas. Now, someone might say, well, that there would never be oil there. Well, I, I just wanted to make it look oily and greasy and grimy. It's an engine, you know, in a Tiger, and these things were known for having all sorts of issues, so why couldn't we just add some fresh engine oil in? And then I just took some enamel thinner and kind of blended it all together. Again, just going for that greasy, grimy look. And, I mean, you guys tell me, did I get a greasy, grimy, well-used engine look to it? Maybe it's too clean. Maybe I should have put more stuff on it. I don't know. You tell me in the comment section. I was happy with this result. So, at this point we can actually set the engine in place. And again, this is where I ran into major issues on my TACOM kit with the Panther. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I have a whole series on the Panther from TACOM. But RFM, thank you so much for taking the time to actually do this right. Now, I will point out that the instructions don't tell you to assemble an engine first. They tell you to put in uh, all the radiator and fuel tank compartments on the left and right of the engine first and drop the engine in. I wouldn't do that. I put the engine in first. Then I put the walls in, as you saw. And then the next thing I did was check for fit. So again, I was so worried about this not fitting. I put the back wall on. I put... Um, tape over that to hold it in place and those two pieces in the middle there next to the engine actually click into place on the back plate so I wanted to make sure they set I kept it taped while the glue dried and I put all the parts in so in other words I used that back plate the rear armor plate as a centering squaring alignment jig while I put the engine together again I just held it in with tape but you can see it worked because nothing ever moved everything dried in place added all the components there and the last step was I actually put the top plate on and taped it down because there is some alignment with the top plate and the uh, radiator scoops that go over top of the fuel tanks I, I don't know what they're called I call them the scoops anyway I set that on the side to dry and I moved on to building the turret okay so obviously we're starting with the beautiful 88 for the Tiger, attaching everything to that turret. And again, you can see the zimmer pattern on the turret. It's already molten on and it looks really good. That's gonna save me a bunch of time later. Um, apparently went on a little out of sequence because I went back to the engine. So uh, in this case, there were a few bits and bobs after the engine compartment dried. You can see I took everything back off and then I added in all the radiator hoses to the engine compartments. There was a few, I think it was mostly radiator hoses. There were a few linkages as well in there that got adjusted and then this last piece here is a snorkel and it will be a snorkel anyway. I also added some leak fuel to that one fuel tank which I thought was a really nice addition. So with that done, the hull is done. We're setting that off to the side, let it dry, going back to the turret. 
So there was a seam because the turret interior piece is in two parts. So I just used some uh, putty like I did on the inside of the hull and then did the inside of the turret, covered up that seam, gave the steel texture. And I wanted to show you guys drilling out the um, barrel on the turret gun. Oh gosh, coaxial machine gun. Oh, it's too early in the morning. My brain's not working. So I also wanted to add some additions to this kit because they just had blank walls inside here and I thought that is extremely boring. I looked up the instructions for, for like mid tigers and added some details in. Is it historically accurate? I have no idea. Is it ex more exciting than a blank wall? Absolutely. And th so that's why I did it. So you can see I primered the parts here. Again, we can see how nice the details are on all these parts. And here we can see the detail of those textures plus the scratch built uh, mounting points and some boxes and stuff on the inside of that turret. Now, the bottom of the turret matches the bottom of the hull, so we paint it with a gray-blue color. Then we come back with crim of ice on things like the back of this seat. Um, we also have the 88 that also is in a crim of ice color. Just painting all the base coats on at this point for the inside components of the turret. So again, gray-blue crim of ice, just like the inside of the, of the Tiger uh, hull. We do that for the tiger turret now what I did in this in the interior panel of the turret is I actually left a bit of a shadow at the bottom I thought it would be a nice little touch just trying to practice some paneling if you will going back to the basket you can see how I chipped it again I used this chipping was all with the sponge method for both red and steel chips looks just as good in my opinion again let me know in the comments if you disagree or agree uh, did the blue for Panzer gray wash some dark earth pigments earth enamels and just make this thing look really lived in and dirty and whew. oh yeah it looks good in my opinion it looks good it looks like a well-used tiger for sure and again this is late war we'll talk about how this scene's going to come about later but for now let's just note that this thing is very well used and it's a late war tiger again same type of methodology for the seats that were done in the driver's compartment. I think I even use a little bit different of colors, but again, you can use any kind of rust tones and you're going to get these beautiful, realistic looking results. There were some linkages that were missing in the kit. Um, this is probably one another just example of, you know, maybe they just didn't go into the details. Maybe the details were missing on their subject. I don't know, but there's obvious linkages that are missing inside the turret, so I added those in with scratch building. Here I'm showing you my extremely high tech trick that I use for getting all the lengths right, and all my measuring devices and whatnot that are in place. And we end with these beautiful results. Now, I painted them black. Obviously, I couldn't get them on ahead of time and, and paint them with the airbrush, so I hand painted them and weathered them, and now they look like they were always supposed to be there. So I think that turned out really nice. Coming back to the periscopes, you can see I've painted silver, then I go over with the periscope green. I think it looks really nice. Again, just, just how you do periscopes, I think this is kind of the standard for doing periscopes. I also wanted to add a few other details that I felt were missing. Again, I like adding cables that are missing. So we have a few cables we're gonna add using more lead wire. I drilled out the holes, super glued them in this point then I came back to the gun I wanted to add a little bit more than just white because it's just a kind of a plain white 88 gun so I added some uh, metallic colors came over with some brown wash and then I did some fresh engine oil just to make it look like it's oily because this would have been an oiled component because it's a gear and then I actually blended it with some enamel thinners just to make it look a little bit better so you can see I did some olive green on the basket there um, not a basket, a uh, shell catcher. We also have our vision for the gunner, our monocle, and then we added the gun in. So at this point, now the gun's all done, everything's chipped. We can attach on the interior, which looks really nice, and then glue this in place. This will all hold really nicely with that little plate that you saw dangling around earlier. That's what that's for. That actually holds it in place to the interior armor piece that we're going to put in place and it allows the gun to go up and down and I also then well at this point we can tie it all together really right so we're going to pop that in place it does come in two pieces outer piece and then the inner piece of that turret 
pop it all together and finagle some things around and it all fits into place with a little bit of a snap. And again, this is a testament to RFM doing such an amazing job. So I wanted to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this build. I apologize for taking you so long, but I'm sure you understand the amount of details, the amount of steps that are involved with all this. Um, took a little bit longer than um, a, a typical exterior build. So again, thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this reveal of the Mighty Tiger One with full interior. Alrighty folks, thank you guys again so much for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe to see more because we are going to be building the outside of this and eventually this will be part of a scene from a movie. So I am planning something big for this guy. Uh, and there's another tank that's going to go with this. So again, subscribe because you don't want to miss out on that. And if you want to see more daily updates and whatnot, I do post almost daily to my Patreon. So definitely check that out as well. If you're interested in seeing more details, understanding how I do things, seeing things more step by step and being able to interact and ask questions as to exactly how I do what I do. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.